Now I want to introduce our next state senator, Greg Paul. Dan, Dan and I met in the first campaign. I just want to let you know. Because you've heard from me many, many times. First, I see Carl Roney, I see Peter, to all the veterans in the crowd, I want you to raise your hand. To all the veterans, raise your hand. I salute you, and I thank you for your service. It was on your back, it was with your blood, it was with the lives of your comrades that we built the greatest nation that this world has ever known. Thank you. Now they didn't fight and die to send our children and our grandchildren into debt. Today, every man, woman, and child and a couple cats and dogs owes $70,000 to the debt. Now that went up by nearly twelve dollars to $13,000 in a year and a half. The statistics show that nearly 90% of what we make as a nation will be debt. If that is your household, you'd be close to being in trouble. Who's holding the bag of that national debt? And China. That's not only an issue of financial security, that's a national security issue. We live in a country where you, <laughs> and these trade deals were crafted mostly by Republicans and ran through by Democrats. But when you pick up your tomatoes, that fertilizer, where'd that come from? Mexico. You know they still use human feces in Mexico to fertilize their crops? You can't get sheetrock from China without it infecting your home. You can't get dog food from China without killing your dog. And we're importing baby formula and milk from countries like that every day. Because we have politicians on both sides of the aisle that believe in one thing. The bottom dollar. And as long as you can take one dollar and turn it into two, that's okay. The reality about America is this. Being an American is inherently about service. You're taught every day, if you watch MTV, if you watch the major news networks, you would think that being an American is about taking one dollar and turning it into two. We have lost our soul in this country. My mother who's here tonight, Judy Ball, come on, you gotta come on. Come on. She acts like she doesn't like that microphone, but boy, she does a good job when she has it. Now I want you all, and where's my dad? Come on. You ran home and changed the locks. Many of you know my story. I was the first in my family to graduate from college. I graduated from the United States Air Force Academy. My dad worked at the post office. My mom worked at Harlan Valley Psychiatric Center. My mom never graduated from high school. She went to work when she was 17. 17 years old. And she worked every day for over 30 years. And this is a story that is mimicked and mirrored in this crowd from man to woman to family to community. And she worked nights in Harlem Valley Psychiatric Center on a ward with dozens of patients. Imagine a 20 year old girl, a 25 year old girl, a 30 year old woman trying to raise a family. And why did she work nights? She worked nights so she could come home in the morning dress us, which I still need help with, Mom. <laughs> Feed us, make sure we got on the bus, which I try to evade at least a couple times a month. And then she would go and work in the rich people's homes up on Quaker Hill, cleaning house. And when she was done doing that, and this is not a one day occurrence, this was a way of life. And when my mom was done doing that, she would come back home, she would clean up the house, she would throw a pot roast in the, in the pot, and this is how I learned how to cook. I'd get off that bus, my mother would be heading out the door, and she'd say, Greg, or to my dad, take it off in about 45 minutes, I'm going to work overtime. 
My mom, my father, they busted their back for over 30 years, and why did they do it? For me, for my brothers, for my sister. Because America has made a promise to all of us. America has made a promise that if you work hard and you obey the law and you play by the rules, that your children will have a better standard of living than you've had. America made you that promise, and that's what our veterans went overseas to fight and some never return. But our friend Mike, who spoke today, is 11 years old, and he has a $70,000 debt, and the IOU is in China. And for the first time in American history, Americans do not believe that the next generation will have a better standard of living than we've had. That's why you're all here. And we're working people. I don't care if you have a business or you work for a business. The people in this crowd, the people I grew up with, the people I love, we have dirt under our fingernails, our backs are sore at night, we live good life, we try to get to church, not as much as Ma wants, but we try to get there. And we love America. And the national press and those on the left have characterized us as extremists, as haters, as mongers, as anti-Americans. There you go. This is the first time in a long time in American history. And you all know the story about our founding fathers. How many of us stand in our living rooms or sit in our living rooms and watch Glenn Beck and Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh? And we watch those shows and we watch that, we listen to that radio and we get madder and madder and madder. Now I know I'm preaching to the choir, but it's not enough to sit and yell at the TV show when CNN's on. It's not enough to watch Glenn Beck and get upset like he is. It's not enough to turn on Rush Limbaugh. Two generations from now, Americans will be born and they will not know what has happened if we are not successful in this election. This is the first time in American history that we have surpassed France in the amount of government, government interference and intrusion into our lives. That is nothing to be proud of. We have an immigration policy in the United States of America, and I have been solid on this issue for four years, and those in the liberal media, including locally in the Journal News, want to turn it into an up first them issue. Why? Because it sells papers. They're sellouts just like the National Party leaders in both parties. They just want that bottom dollar. But we have a national immigration policy that forces seven million people to wait in line for an average of six to seven years. And meanwhile, we allow one million illegal aliens without a criminal background check, without a medical background check, to stream across our border every year. And the Republicans are responsible too! And if they can secure Area 51, but here's a better one for you, I've never seen anybody go over the fence at Disney World, and if they did, they'd be arrested. So maybe Mickey Mouse can do a better job than Napolitano! For the first time in a long time in American history, this silent majority is awake. We are silent no longer. All of you, my mom, my dad, the stories that we have, we believe in the greatness of America. And this is our time. This election, whether it be for the state senate in the state of New York, or whether it be for the United States Congress, this is the time to take back the United States of America. I ask you, get involved. Continue to communicate, work with your neighbors, and we will have the most enormous victory, not for the Republicans, not for the Democrats, but for the United States of America that we've had since the revolution.